Hey guys, we're here at Mind Pump TV. I'm here with uh, Matt Vincent, two-time World Highland Games champion. Hi. Go ahead and take a bow, my friend. Take a bow. <laughs> Serious badass here. We're actually gonna kind of walk you badass. guys through Project Badass. Project Badass. That's All right. What, that's we're, what the, we're that's your the series is called. Project Badass. Project Badass. How are we gonna accomplish being a badass? First give me the, thing you give me learn, the steps. You got. We already mastered the hurricane punch. <laughs> Are we gonna that's, add that into the video? Cause that's a secret episode, episode two. I don't know if I want that to get out, yeah. man. That's my go-to move. So one of the things we've talked about is, you know, for regular athletes and stuff like that, how to take some of the stuff that I've learned from throwing about, you know, building balance and building kind of body awareness and neuromuscular timing and trying to learn to, you know, get things to fire in order. And that's, right. there's that's, a sequence to it all. Right, you know, that's part of say doing clean successfully is I can't, I can't finish my shoulders first off the floor. I need my hips to get through right. before the shoulders finish to generate the most amount of force, transfer it into the actual barbell. Okay, so what's step one in the process of getting to a, a powerful swing? Powerful swing. So one of the things we're gonna talk about is just learning how to actually transfer power from your legs and hips into your arms without your arms needing to be this stiff driving force, right? Mm. You know, most gyms now have maces of some sort, uh, you know, we do a lot of sledgehammer swings, stuff like that. And you can use a sledgehammer, but essentially, you know, what we're doing is working on your core and, and keeping your arms long. Right. And so part of your warm up, you know, is just letting it drift around. I'm not fighting this. I'm not, uh, you know, really straining or doing any of that. And the arms are staying long. Now I'm not doing this, right? Right, because that's all just upper that's body. Just You're not getting body. your hips involved. And so it's, it's going really slow and then pushing the arm back, getting the weight behind me and being able to push those hips. Hmm. Now I see a, a transfer of weight from one foot to the other as you're right. kind of circling around your head there. You could also learn to pick each foot up hmm. when you learn where it unweights. Mm -hmm. And that's that kind of feeling of just being aware, right, of where your body is in space, how you're moving. You just see so many athletes that, are generating a ton of force and a ton of power, but they're not on balance. Mm -hmm. And what I look at is that's just so much wasted energy that athlete has. I mean, why not get better at using the power that you've got mm -hmm. on the barbell or on the implement instead of, you know, bashing your head into the wall to get stronger. Yeah. It's easier to make some technique changes and learn some body awareness stuff like that that can translate into your overall movements. Now you said the first year specifically you focused on technique because yeah. you know you already had like somewhat of a basis of strength to well, work yeah, with. Yeah, the strength was there. Yeah. I, at that point I'd finished powerlifting. I've had a you know 700 pound raw squat and pulled seven and benched you know four and a quarter. Right. I didn't need to be any stronger to throw a 16 pound stone. Right. I need to be faster and I need to be in better positions to create torque, create power. So now you're talking about faster. How critical is it to be able to maintain that loose movement, but also under control? That, that's really the whole game, right? I mean, it's, it's you know, throwing something, moving the barbell. The stiffer you are, you know, going with Olympic lifts or anything, the less things are gonna fire and be powerful. There's a reason that smooth is fast, fast is smooth, mm -hmm. type of thing like that. And so, you want to be able to keep things in position and in place while being able to transfer that power into it. And it's, you know, it's that transition is where you're trying to get so that it's getting into the implement mm -hmm. and that you're not fighting as much. You mm -hmm. know, what's, what's the easiest you can make this happen mm -hmm. with staying smooth. And so it's, it's, so that later builds into your actual strength performance. Hmm. So do you literally just kind of go through swinging on its own and break the different components of the swing out into your training as far as treating it as a skill? Like step one, I'm just going to kind of start with the transferring of the weight between Absolutely. the feet. Yeah. Step one is I just want to be able to stay on balance swinging a thing. To control the circular yep. rotation. You know, and once I can stay on balance there and I'm not fighting it, let's work on how do I accelerate it? Mm -hmm. You start accelerating it using your hand first, you're going to be thrown off balance. Because mm -hmm. then you're pulling and fighting, whereas you have all this, and if it's behind, and it's going to have to counter, 
where your arms are, mm -hmm. it's, it's the same as countering any other implement. It's about creating leverage and finding your body awareness and how to position better mm. to get the better transfer into what you're doing. It seems like a lot of core stability will play a key component yeah. to keeping you grounded right. and uh, in one place. So like what kind of training specifically would you say uh, would be applicable there? You know, core work, stuff like that. I've been asked that a lot. It's like, you know, we've looked at your program and we don't see a lot of uh, ab work in it. <laughs> okay. I'm like, oh, I'm, I throw four times a week. Yes, okay. That'll, that'll take care of it. <laughs> I mean, also, I mean, if you're benching, squatting, deadlifting heavy, your core is fine. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be strong enough. Whereas this is gonna add, you know, that different rotational element. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a nice addition to the core work. Which we've kind of talked a little bit about, like, some people are very accessory focused, whereas they're kind of straying away from these like major, you know, no major gross and motor a minor, movements. man. No. no major and a minor. There you go. You know, it's it's no one gives a shit what your uh, what your max good morning is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's an accessory yeah. movement. Stop. I don't know. I mean, somebody out there, right? Uh, maybe yeah. they're just wrong. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's yeah. That's one way to put it. So. Yeah, so as far as like now, we're getting into the power out of it. So if we were to grab the medicine ball per se, show me how to sort of transfer from these ground forces from your feet now into the ball and how do we improve on our acceleration there? So two options, this med ball is really light yeah. uh, at 12 pounds. It's probably gonna like hit you in the I'd face. Yeah, I would use out. like a 25 pound or something like that, right? All right. And so right. one of the ways to do it would be, you know, full extension from here and then figuring out how to slam it into the ground mm. at full speed mm -hmm. and that's that's that you know people look at speed work and stuff like that and you see it and it's atrocious yeah because you're the weight's too heavy you're not moving at a max speed yeah and so find an implement that you can work on throwing further away from you mm. that doesn't have to get heavier mm -hmm. you know you generating more force to throw it further is you moving faster mm -hmm. instead of well i added more weight you know, that's, that's not, you're, you're decelerating. Right, it's actually slowing you down. The load right. is, yeah, getting right. you in know, the way. You, you can't throw something with any force that weighs 12 pounds moving at this speed. <laughs> right. Or jumping, right? You can't mm -hmm. jump slow. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, actually having something that's gonna be dynamic and speed work, mm. you know, these are a great one that, that aren't gonna have to take a ton of time to learn a technical side of it. It is literally just up from your toes and down. And right. so you're, your so first you're fully movement extended. is pulling in and, mm -hmm. and collapsing and starting the movement by generating that down force here. Mm -hmm. And then the arms come straight through. Mm -hmm. So yeah. really you have to be in communication all the way from your fingertips to your toes. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's one it, thing that I'm always trying to kind of express to athletes, but this is a hard concept, especially for strength athletes. Well, for me, push press was always really strong. Mm -hmm. If I knew my push press was strong, that was telling me that I am doing a very good job of generating from here up through my hands. Mm. Not having to jerk under it or do mm -hmm. any of that, but stay, boom. And then, you know, the other side of it is if you've got room to do basket tosses. And right. Just throw it as high as you can, let it drop, catch it, and then hammer it again. Mm -hmm. And doing sets of 10 of that, that you can really maintain that the full speed. Once you start slowing down, stop. Yeah. Yeah, because then it just uh, it, it, it declines as far as your performance is concerned. Right. And this has always been something that I'm trying to stress. When the fatigue happens, the form breaks down, that we just yep. stop. Stop. I mean, it depends on your goal. Look, if you're doing hypertrophy work and, and going to be doing barbell curls, like, hammer away. Yeah. But if this is a mo like a motor pattern we're trying to establish, mm -hmm. I mean, know the intent of what your exercise is. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, how important do you think uh, specificity is towards your sport? I think the longer you're in a sport and the better you get at it, the more important specificity is. Hmm. So for me, the longer that I was throwing, like after doing it for 10 years, right? Like, yeah, that's when I need to start really trying to figure out how do I use from this position to push my hips through and finish a throw. You start getting to a point where you know all that's gonna happen. Yeah. I don't have to think about it every throw. So then I can start, if I can get this stronger, mm -hmm. this is now another part that I can literally feel pull mm -hmm. into the throw, not just push the hip and then go to the shoulder. Right. I can actually feel a moment where I'm gonna engage and pull through here. So talk about that a little bit as far as being able to recruit and generate more tension, certain areas of your body to sort of coil into position and then release. So 
you know, ideally what you want to be able to do is figure out how you can transfer power from your really big strong muscles in your legs and hips yeah. into your hands. Mm -hmm. And so one of the ways you can do that, like if I'm here, right, and we're standing and I'm going to push my hip through, my shoulders don't move. They just stay right here. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can get back like this, right, where I've created torque and I'm at the end kind of range of that line, as I push the hip through, everything I do to my foot goes into that hand. Mm -hmm. I can't help it. Mm -hmm. So this is just staying loose and staying behind and everything that pushes the hip is gonna transfer down. So that's just an extension really of the hip right. that's generating yep. here. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's where you've found with technique wise, you can really end up throwing farther, right? Right, I mean, but think about how it translates to an Olympic lift, right? So if you're, your arms are long and you're straight and you're on the barbell mm -hmm. and you're extending up like this, you're transferring into the bar. Mm -hmm. As soon as you're that guy who's flaring the elbows out, your elbows are right. out, that's, trying to that's, strength that's it another up. hinge mm -hmm. that's losing that power. Mm -hmm. So the longer you can stay with these type of things and, and in better position, the more transfer of your power you got. Okay, so I, I run into this a lot, especially with people that are familiar with more bodybuilder hypertrophy style training yeah. where, um, I mean, the go-to really with that is to be able to, you know, get strong and, and lift and, and, well, and build more mass and build more mass. So now taking that type of individual and then putting them into more of an athletic type of a movement, how it's, do you, where do you start with that? You know, it's a trade off. And for me, I would start with doing simple stuff like sprints, hmm. stuff that I've actually got to move my body in space instead of just, I'm concreted to the floor. Right. And, and focusing on one movement. Everything sagittal, yep. front and back, yeah. Let's also work on big multi-joint movements. Hmm. Let's do something, you know, like squats or deadlifts or cleans mm -hmm. that I've got to recruit the entire body and not just one muscle at a time. Right. And doing that and then, you know, adding in some, some movement patterns where you're going to do some kettlebell work or, you know, even kettlebells around the head mm -hmm. and stuff like that, trying to get some more mobility in. The longer range of motion you got, and the stronger you are is the longer you can apply force on something. Mm -hmm. So if I can only move two inches, that's you can't what apply you gotta work force with, very right? Long. Right. But yeah. if I can get from back here, mm -hmm. you know, would you rather me hit you with a punch from here? <laughs> well, I mean, Bruce Lee did. Or throw it, right? it from back here, yeah. you know? Sure. You wanna be able to transfer that into it. Uh -huh. And so it, it's those type of movements that getting used to moving in space, getting used to your body adapting and, and finding your balance and learning how to shift and stay balanced. Mm. So as far as your av average everyday person, right? So we're talking about athletes and um, how important do you think it is to kind of express like throwing patterns and things like this in everyday movement? You know, I think so many people get caught up in the fact that, you know, I'm in the gym and I've got to do this and we kind of forget, we forget that it, there's some play to it. There's some movement, there's, there's taking Absolutely. some time to have a skill to, to develop a new thing instead of just build muscles that don't do much, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, for most of us, we're not competing. We're not trying to get on stage. We're trying to be a little bit better fit. So don't spend a bunch of time building your muscle and then forget that you'd also like this to be able to move. Right, you wanna be able to use them Yeah, don't too. look like yeah. a fucking robot, right? Right, they can't so, wipe your ass and you're screwed. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, you can stay flexible and build strength. There's gonna be some sacrifice of mobility, sure, at some point. Right. But, I mean, why not condition yourself to have both? I'm glad you brought that up because that's something that's a common question because if, if you know, taking somebody from more of hypertrophy style training and bodybuilder focused and then having them go through these different movement patterns, like there will be a little bit of loss of strength in certain, you, you know, bench you, and <laughs> squat. You don't and, get to pursue strength to your max potential and stay super bendy. There yeah. may be some people outside the bell curve Two different that get pursuits. to live that way, right? But most of us aren't there. Yeah. But it's important, right? So right. That, it is important. It's yeah. important for you know lack of pain and, and tissue health and these type of things. And so being able to generate force and move in space and be a little bit more fluid and on balance is going to help that if you're not right. stuck walking around like that. Right. And so I mean, you don't have to be yoga master. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you've put a lot of time in and doing mobility work, you know, maybe the goal isn't to become super bendy. Mm -hmm. The goal is just not to lose any more. Right. Yeah. 
And I look at it as just like maintaining skill and athleticism yeah. in general. So right. I know this is, and, and this is where it gets kind of complex for your everyday kind of fitness enthusiast. And well, why, why if you were training, right? Other than it's hard and mm -hmm. it's another thing to do. Why, when you were training for anything that you in the gym, would you want to be less athletic? Good question. Yeah. Yeah. Why? For something you could spend 10 minutes in your warm up doing something mm -hmm. different like that. Just being aware, moving around, using your entire body. Right, so I guess the last thing, we've been really focused on preparing for the workout. Mm. As far as the warm up is concerned, we actually call it priming. So we're, sure. we're trying to teach the body this uh, yeah. you know, the optimal recruitment pattern that we're gonna kind of bring into the workout. Yeah, fire the CNS. How important, up. yeah, how have you, in, you know, implemented that into your workouts and training? Well, I mean, training? you know, standard for me, no matter what I'm doing, I'm gonna spend, you know, probably 10 minutes on the assault bike, 10 minutes moving. I want, I want to break a sweat mm. before I've started diving into the workout. And the other benefit of that too is I'm burning extra calories. Mm -hmm. It's 10 minutes. I'm gonna feel better. Blood's flowing. I'm, I'm, I always think of it like I'm breaking off whatever shell mm. that I've created overnight, and so that the body starts moving again to allow me more range of motion, less risk more of pliable. injury. More yeah. pliable. Yeah. Right. You know, is it gonna be the best thing in the world for me for generating max effort? Maybe not, because mm -hmm. being stiff helps. Mm -hmm. But risk versus reward, you know, being stiff helps, but there's also an inline to that stiffness, then like, oh cool, you don't get to work out for eight weeks. Right. And what makes people stronger is consistency. Right. And so consistently having your routine be, you know, a solid warm up, taking care of your soft tissue work, you know, treating your workout with the same respect that it should and having intent of why you're there. That's awesome. That's great, great advice. I think that's where we're gonna cut it for awesome. today, man. But if you like this video, uh, go ahead and comment and subscribe and uh, share it with your friends. And uh, thanks, thanks for doing this, Matt. Appreciate Love it. Love it, man. Yeah, Happy you're to be awesome. Here. Yeah.